Welcome back to another video. So it is Monday afternoon. So my training days have now changed for the next two weeks. They are kind of just gonna be all over the place. I am now gonna be training four days back to back so that I can fit in my first session of next week before I go on holiday on Sunday. So basically the next two weeks are gonna be a little bit chaotic, especially as someone who always, like my training days are my training days and nothing changes with that. Um, obviously over the next couple of weeks I've got enough stuff coming up that I haven't really got choice which is absolutely fine because it'll be worth it and I know that my training will still be absolutely fine so currently it's like 2pm I have done all my work so far for the day and I am now about to well I have started meal prepping which you can possibly hear in the background which is why I was in the other room um, so yeah I'm now meal prepping I'm trying a new recipe that I found on Instagram it's like a Kung Pao noodles recipe I've added beef mint so that I can get a bit of extra protein in because the recipe online was literally just for the noodles um, and I've added some different veggies as well just to add a little bit of extra fibre, a little bit more nutrients and I'm basically going to wing it. If it goes successfully I will show you what I've done or talk you through kind of what I've done. If it's not successful I will not be showing you what I've done um, but basically my recipes I tend to just get on Instagram. Um, so many different food accounts on there especially food accounts that are trying to make like macro friendly meals and things like that so and they're always quick and easy recipes too. I think one of the biggest keys to staying on track with your nutrition is obviously eating foods that you enjoy, but also just knowing how to cook. I'm not an excellent chef by any means, but I kind of know the basics well enough to just be able to like chuck things together. So when I find these recipes on Instagram and stuff, I tend to just save them in like a specific folder that I've say I've got and I've created. And then I will try the recipes. And then if I like them, I will just kind of so you're making them but when I say I try the recipes I don't follow the instructions I look at the ingredients and then I'm like okay well what's the easiest quickest way I can do this and I just basically chuck it together um but yeah so trying any recipes that'd be interesting I need to make some baked oats but I'll probably do that tomorrow to be honest because I mean I make my baked oats with banana and basically the softer the banana is the better they're going to be and our bananas are pretty much ready to make but or like to make the baked oats with but I'm not going to have them today so I can't fit them in my macros today so probably do that tomorrow but I might show you what I do for them as well um so yeah basically just meal prepping I've got the walking dead on on my laptop so I'm catching up well I'm re-watching it at the moment actually I'm not catching up on it um I'm also just like pacing through the house I am catch I'm re-watching can't get my words out the walking dead because my mum started watching it and she's never watched it before and I watched it years ago when it came out but I never finished it and um, my mum started watching it and I found whenever I was at hers and she had it on I couldn't take my eyes off the tv so I was like you know what I'm just gonna re-watch this as well so I'm on like halfway through season four um so yeah I'm basically to make meal prep and food prep more interesting I usually either have music or a podcast on but at the minute I've just been watching The Walking Dead so I've just got that on whenever I'm like cooking meals or like doing other jobs and bits so yeah that's all I've really got to say I am kind of looking forward to training today kind of not my I don't think I mentioned this in the last video I finally got the rigor mortis carpet burn last session so I won't show you the back of my leg but basically when I first got my rigor mortis sleeves I'm just gonna Put my phone down, my camera down because it's hurting my thumb. When I first got my rigor mortis sleeves, one of the girls I know that has them did say that she got carpet burn on the back of her leg from hers, and I haven't had that. And I think the reason I haven't had that is because I tend to squat really quickly, like, I don't really walk around too much between sets. I literally just do a set, load the bar, do a set, load the bar, and then between my back offs where it's all the same weight, I kind of just take like a minute or two and then I go. Like, I don't have long rest breaks. Obviously, on the last week of the block, I don't have longer rest breaks because it's heavier and more tiring. Um, but the last week of the block I was at powering through and that's the day I got the carpet burn and I think because there was like six of us sharing the rack I was trying to like well I had to go to the toilet a couple of times like walk back and towards to the toilet and stuff so I was walking further than I normally would like normally if I walk between sets I'm just kind of pacing in, a, in the same spot and walking in rigor mortis sleeves isn't easy anyway so basically I think I got like friction burn carpet burn type thing from them because I was wearing them for longer than I normally would when I was training um, on Saturday so back of my knees very tender very sore and less than two days later, I am, or two days later, I am squatting again. So that's not going to be fun. I might see if I can try and put something over it to stop it rubbing directly on it. But I don't know if that's going to be possible. So that is an issue that I'm going to bring to my mum because that's the sort of thing a mum should know. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to train though. I feel like having a couple of weeks where days are going to be completely off track and just get your sessions done when they can is actually going to be really good for me mentally because... I'm very good at ignoring externals and ignoring other things that affect my training, but I think it's gonna be really telling and just really good for me to have two weeks that are pretty much completely off track. Obviously, I say off track, I, you get what I mean. Two weeks where things are far from perfect and I'm still gonna execute and hit the numbers and I'm still gonna have good training and I'm very confident I'm still gonna have really good training. 
And I think it would be really good for me mentally to know that because then obviously for the next block or the block after this one is Commonwealth and I'm going to be flying over there. I'm going to be having days out of routine. I'm not good at changing my routine. That's a big reason why I don't really go away much. Um, so I think it's going to be good for me mentally to just know that if this block is successful, it's going to be successful. Um, then there's no reason why my other blocks can't be successful no matter what kind of gets thrown at me. Even if, because normally if I'm really busy or I've got hectic, like a lot of stuff going on or my days aren't perfect, I'm still training the same days, but this time it's like completely different. It's like I'm literally training four days back to back. I'm doing day one today, accessories tomorrow, like upper accessories tomorrow. My second main session or like my day three on Wednesday and then I'm doing my leg and well full body accessory day that's very leg focused on Thursday. So that'll be the fourth day in a row of training, which I have not done in years. But it's fine and then i'm literally gonna have one rest day friday and then do day one of the following week on saturday but then i'm gonna have more rest while i'm away i'll probably do one accessory day when i'm away so it's fine i'm just rambling basically things are good um excited to start the new block really busy few weeks coming up but i'm excited i'm also for the first time since i started coaching taking like complete time off normally i will still reply to messages when i'm away obviously not necessarily as quickly but i don't really go away often anyway but yeah, so I've emailed all clients, obviously, and I've let everyone know. But from Saturday through to Wednesday, I am completely off work. And it's going to be really strange. Obviously, I'm going to catch up with everyone as soon as I'm back. That's fine. Um, but it's going to be really nice fully switching off. I feel like I'm going to not know what to do with myself. I also feel like if anyone does send messages through when I'm away, which trying to avoid happening, I have kind of spoken to clients about this. Um, but if messages do come through when I'm away, I have a horrible feeling I'm not going to be able to resist replying to them, which is why I'm asking them not to send them through. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to have some time off. It's going to be good. And then I'm also excited to get back because I've got um, plenty of people have been inquiring recently. So I've got new signups and stuff to do when I get back, which will be really fun. Um, yeah, things are good. Life is good. Um, body weight is still low 86s. I think I was 86.5 this morning, but I did go a little bit over on my food yesterday just because I was out all day. So I had basically had higher carbs than normal. So retaining a little bit today, but that's not a problem. Um, yeah, nothing else to say. I need to get my meal prep done. I will show you if it's successful and then I'm gonna go train. Okay, so I have just had my lunch, so I actually didn't have my meal prep. All my meal prep has been put away and put in the fridge, got five portions made up, so that's it's just nice and convenient. Like, it's so easy, it's not easy, that's not the right word. It's so important just to have food prepped in the fridge, ready to go, just meals that you can literally just chuck in the microwave or eat cold, whatever you prefer, just to keep you on track. Because the thing is, when you're hungry is when you're gonna have cravings. So by just having food prepped in advance all the time, you can avoid being hungry. You can make sure they're meals that you can easily fit into your macros or your calories, whatever you do with your diet, however you kind of track your food or whatever you do with your food. It's just having food prepped in the fridge is just the easiest way to succeed. And I know it's not necessarily easy to find time to prep, but if you like watching TV or whatever in the evenings, just put the TV on or put your laptop on while you're cooking or just make your meals that you normally have for dinner. Say you're cooking dinner most nights, just double the portion, triple the portion, leave the leftovers in the fridge. You can then reheat it or again, eat it cold, whatever you prefer. Like it's, once you get used to doing it, it's just so, so easy. Um, so yeah, I didn't actually have that for lunch. That's what I'm gonna have when I get home. So I've got a really quick, easy meal when I get back in from training. Um, what I actually have for lunch is one thing I've also been doing is basically I'm kind of bored of chicken. And so I have been making up a joint of pork like most weeks. And then I'll just basically shred it up. I'll have it as like whatever meal for the first meal once it's been cooked. And then I will just use the leftovers for, rest of, for the rest of the week for like rice bowls and things um, with like some homemade salsas and stuff like that and some beans just to get like a nice nutritious high five meal in that's also really tasty and just a really, just it's like a summery meal for me, I think. Like I don't like salads, I don't enjoy that sort of thing, but I feel like a nice rice bowl I've been having mango salsa with it as well. It's just lovely and it feels summery to eat and it's so filling as well. So yeah, today I cooked up a joint of pork because I realized I don't have any time the rest of the week to actually be at home long enough to do that because I slow cook it in the oven. Um, so I had pork for lunch with some Yorkshire puddings that I found in the freezer actually. So not the most nutritious lunch, but it was tasty. I feel like I've had a bit of a treat. I am stuffed now though. So thankfully I'm not training for a little while yet. So I'm gonna have an apple about an hour before I train like I normally would. And I've got some stuff to do with my parents before I can train anyway, including writing up my training block. I know what I'm doing for my training block. I just haven't officially written it down in my diary, which is how I log my training. Um, but yeah, so I've got some stuff to do with my parents. So it's gonna be a good few hours before I train anyway, although it is four o'clock. So I do need to get on because I don't want to be late or too late home, but it's fine. Now I'm gonna head there and get some bits done when I'm there, have my pre-workout, apple and monster, perfect combination. 
and then I'll train in a few hours, obviously when I'm not feeling as bloated. So yeah, I will see you at my parents' house when I'm training. We've said our goodbyes, but we won't go home just yet. You've got your head down, just like when we first met. I can't believe it's ending. Why did we fuck it up? So stupid and upsetting. How can I give you up? We've said our goodbyes. So just finished squatting, I put my head back on because I'm so like overheating and look at my fringe. Um, my fringe is just annoying me in my face when I get hot. Um, squats went really well. I literally squatted 180 for three two days ago and 160 for fours two days ago and I'm back squatting already. So I wasn't really sure how to expect things to feel. Like although my body kind of felt normal and fine today, obviously my sleep hasn't been brilliant and yeah, I just didn't really know what to expect. And yesterday was like a busy day. Um, but yeah, no, everything felt really comfortable, really easy. I'm really excited for the numbers plan this block. I haven't gone quite as ambitious as I would like to this block, but I've still gone ambitious and I haven't gone crazy conservative because I think I'd regret it if I went really conservative and things were really, really easy at the end of the block. Um, but essentially the next three weeks, I think my days are just going to be muddled all over the place. There's not really going to be much consistency in what days I can do, do my sessions. Um, so it's going to be a case of just cramming them in where I can type thing and just trying to prioritise rest days as much as possible. But like this week, I'm literally doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So my entire first week of training is going to be done in four days. Bearing in mind, I literally did SPD two days ago. I've had one rest day. Then I'm going to rest Friday and start my next week on Saturday. So it's just basically just kind of fit things in where I can. But I don't mind doing that. And I think I mentioned earlier, like in a way, I think it would be really good for me to do this because it's going to force me out of my comfort zone of having my really strict schedule and routine and I know this training is still going to go really well like tonight is an indicator that I can just I can perform when I need to perform and obviously it's week one it's quite lightweight but they're still heavy weights for a week one um and they move super easily and I'm very excited to see where we can push squats this block and yeah I'm really happy I'm also very excited to start benching in a second as well just because of the new cues and stuff that I was speaking to someone about on Saturday um I'm quite excited to try and implement them tonight and just see how things feel. Again, obviously it's really light. It is my higher volume bench day as well. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited. I'm hoping that I can really get a sinking bench completely nailed. The improvement from the start of last block to the end of last block is incredible anyway. So, or the improvement in consistency. So if I can just get it nailed this block, then it'll be just in time for comp block. Um, body's feeling pretty healthy to be fair. My thumb is a little bit better, I think. I'm probably going to have to deadlift and straps tonight just to keep it as healthy as possible and not risk making it any worse, especially because I'm training so many days this week. Um, my elbow feels all right. It's mildly tender, but it's been much worse in the past. So I think I think we're on track. I'm, yeah, going to bench in a sec. Just need to cool down a little bit first. Um, but, you yeah, know, I'm very excited to get benched on tonight and see how things move and how things feel. It's hard to tell when things are like how they're actually feeling, but I just want things consistent. I just want each rep to feel consistent, get my technique the same every rep and I'll be happy and that is literally the goal for this block is to get I think I mentioned this at the start of last block basically these two blocks before my comp block this day especially is going to be very high volume just to get extra skill practice in on this new technique and with this new style um and yeah I'm excited I think sinking is the key to me having a big bench in comp and even if it doesn't show up for commonwealth I think by British with extra six weeks of skill practice it definitely will um so yeah, also on the note of British, um, can you tell I'm putting, I mean, I'm really excited to bench, but I'm also putting off training. Um, with common, not Commonwealth, with the British, um, I feel like people might not be turning up for the 84s, which is okay. I know one girl who is doing Commonwealth with me, with me anyway, so we still get to compete together this year, um, is probably not gonna do the British, which is fine. Um, but I really, there's like, I would say there's probably about four or five of us at least, if not more, that are really close together in the 84s that are probably going to be battling for third, depending on who turns up. And I would like as many of them there as possible because I think it would just be really fun. Um, 
but we'll see. But then to be fair, I think I've also said, I don't know if I've made this in a video, if I have a really good performance at Commonwealth, I might just apply for dispensation for British. Um, it just depends, and also it depends how my body's feeling after Commonwealth as well. Um, but I would like to do it. I feel like I'm in the mood to do loads of comps at the moment, so I might as well just go in and do it. And I th think, like, six weeks isn't the optimal time for me to have between comps. Obviously, it isn't for anyone. But, like, my blocks are never six weeks. My blocks are four weeks, and four weeks works best for me. And I'm very particular about things. I can maybe do a five-week block, but six weeks in my head is, like, how am I going to prep for that? And obviously, I know how to prep for that. I do this for my clients all the time. But in my mind, it's like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I think the challenge of getting myself to, like, comp ready like for back-to-back -back comps six weeks apart I think for, like it will be really good for me to do because I know if I keep the right mindset I will be able to do really well in both so I think in a way I'm kind of wanting the challenge of programming myself into both but it'll be fine we'll see there's also a reason at the end of the year I said I might do if it is sponsored by SPD because if the winner will get um a free SPD kit like a full free SPD kit and part of me is to just enter and try and win just so I can get a full SPD kit even though I definitely don't need it but Free stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, no, I'm gonna bench now. decent to be fair definitely consistent a lot more consistent now I'm focusing on back tightness more so than anything else I think it's a good thing for me to focus on like I always have like a, a tick list checklist in my head can't talk um and actually yeah it definitely felt more consistent tonight even I'll admit I've got flies in the room um I'll even admit like I did get a bit lazy especially on my four by four back offs like I wasn't necessarily putting as much effort into getting everything right but even with that they were still a lot more consistent like I kept my line everything moved really well I think it's just one of those things when it's so light and you have so much volume it is hard to keep your brain occupied and I know that sounds really silly and possibly really stupid and lazy of me um but it's just the truth at least for me with bench especially because for me like I have always been a bit of a, like a bro lifter like a bro bencher especially um, and obviously there is so much technique behind my bench but once you get that especially with my soft touch like once you get used to your technique and your lock up becomes instinct your lock up your setup becomes instinct then you can just focus on the weight rather than like the checklist in your mind um i hope that kind of makes sense but yeah basically bench felt really good very happy with it i do want to crack on and get deadlifts done though because i would like to get home in somewhat decent time like it's just gone nine so it's quite late um but i kind of expected that for tonight so it's fine um i think this week is literally just going to be a case of just survive and then enjoy my holiday so yeah that is the plan they're going to deadlift um yeah it's very hot though so i think i have to use talc um, I also really don't want to use straps. I am worried about my grip. Um, but I also know that I need to sort my thumb out. So I should probably just use straps and suck it up. So I'll use straps. It's fine. It's three by three. I think either 152 or 155. So pretty easy week. I think it's 152. So it should be absolutely fine. I should be able to get it done literally within like, by the time I've set the bar up and everything, like 15 minutes, I reckon. So yeah, just going to crack on and get those done. And then I have got B-stance RDLs after, but they're super light. Um, it's just basically 
yeah, gonna get those done after. But again, this whole, like, I should be done within 25, 30 minutes, I reckon. Hopefully including cleaning up, but we'll see. So just finished training, managed to get deadlifts done pretty quickly actually. I hate pulling in straps. Setting up at the bottom is just so awkward and then like I like to feel my brace from the top for my first rep and then I can rebrace at the bottom every other rep because I can feel this, like I can kind of mimic the feeling if that makes sense. But yeah, setting up from the bottom, getting that first brace and positioning from the bottom feels horrible. Not a fan of straps but I do definitely think it will help my thumb heal. I do kind of feel like it's looking a little bit weirder as time goes on, so probably shouldn't be just ignoring it, but also I don't feel like anything would be done for a thumb, so we're just gonna see. Um, yeah, no, deadlifts felt fine. They were easy enough. The, act the last set was actually the easiest, I think. Um, I think mentally I just didn't really want to do them, which has been a bit of a recurring theme for deadlifts recently anyway. So because I knew it was the last set, like mentally it just, it just moved better and it was quicker and easier. But I got them done pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, it's 152, it should be a breeze. And it was, it was literally just the fact that I had two straps that threw my positioning off a little bit, but it's fine, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned with straps that my grip strength is gonna get weaker because my grip isn't always amazing on deadlifts. Um, so I'm a little bit worried basically that I'm gonna end up dropping a deadlift on grip when it comes to Commonwealth, but then I don't wear straps for any of my grip, any of my accessory work. Um, and generally my grip strength is decent, so it should be okay. And also hopefully, like, by the end of this block, I should hopefully have a healed thumb, maybe? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that, I've really not really got many, I can't talk. I've not really got many thoughts about the session, to be honest. It was the first session of the block. I'm feeling pretty positive about it, considering I've literally did my end of block session, what, two days ago? So I've literally had one rest day in between, which wasn't really a day of rest either. So I can't really complain at how the day went. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for this block. I'm very excited to see how things go. Um, this is the closest I've been to a comp without mentally freaking out. So that's also a very good sign. Like, I don't think I've ever felt this confident, this close to a comp. So that's very cool. I just got to keep that mindset, I guess, going forwards. I think having distractions over the next couple of weeks, like my friend's hen doing at her wedding, being away, being out of the powerlifting world will also do me wonders in terms of not giving me a chance to freak out. Um, so yeah, that's all I've really got to say. I am going to go home and eat my meal prep from earlier, see what that's like. A little bit worried that it's gonna to be too spicy for me because I did try a tiny little bit earlier. And um, even though I tried to limit how much of like the spices I put in, I am a little bit concerned it's gonna to be too spicy, but I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm probably gonna wrap the video up here. If I do any meal prep tomorrow, I might film it and add it in. So if this isn't the end of the video, that'll be why. But if it is the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you've made it to the end. Let me know if you've got any predictions of what you think I can hit for a top double on squats this block. That is my main primary session. What you think I'm gonna hit for my top set of four towards the end of the block as well on squats. Um, how do you think my bench is looking? If you think it's the right call going to sinking. Um, intrigued by people's thoughts. Um, yeah, if you've got any predictions for Commonwealth, what you think I'm gonna be able to hit. Also intrigued to hear those. Obviously I'm not gonna let anything sway my plan. Um, I've kind of, I mean, I don't, I haven't planned my numbers at all for Commonwealth, but obviously just block progression and you have a bit of an idea of where you're roughly going to end up for your coming blocks. So yeah, I'm intrigued for people's opinions though. So yeah, let me know down below if you've made it to the end of the video. Let me know if you have any thoughts on my training or anything like that. Let me know if you have any questions for me because I want to get back to doing Q&As in these videos as well. And please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you at some point for the next video.